Hi everyone and welcome to Soul GPS. This is Ava. Today the topic of our video is working with your abusive ex at the same company, at the same office. What to do, especially if their new object of affection is also working in the same place. Before I get into the topic of our video, I wanted to make a quick announcement. I'm going to be teaching a workshop in November this year. It's going to take place in the city of Amsterdam in Holland. We will be all day in workshop on November 24th, which is a Saturday. And on Friday, the day before, we will have an informal gathering in the evening to get to know each other and to share our intentions. On Saturday, we will have provided a vegetarian meal so that we can continue working together. Um, the time frame for the day is 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. If you are interested, please send me an email to soulgpshealing at gmail.com with Amsterdam workshop in the subject line. To give you an overview of our program, we're going to dive into inner child healing first to understand trauma responses and attachment styles. We will talk about how to nurture the child and how to tame the inner critic. Second, we will look at setting boundaries and do some practices and exercises around that. We will be sharing tools for dealing with difficult people, coping with memories and flashbacks, overcoming people pleasing and cultivating self-forgiveness. Finally, in the third part of our day, we will be looking at finding our life purpose understanding and appreciating your journey up to this point and using the experience that you've been through to propel you to a better life. We will also talk about the power of authenticity, which is one of the perks of going through the experience of narcissistic abuse. I understand this is not an easy subject. It's quite heavy and intense and also quite dark at times. However, there are definitely bright sides to having been through this. So that's what I want to share with you during our time together. The workshop is open to 10 participants only. So let me know as soon as you can, if you'd like to reserve your spot. All right, let's get into the topic of today's video. What to do when you happen to share the same workspace as your narcissistic ex? Worse, what if their new object of narcissistic supply and love bombing happens to be in the same vicinity and you're there witnessing the new story unfolding? I know this can be incredibly painful and disruptive to your work, so I have five tips for you. First tip, detach emotionally. I know this is very difficult and this may take some time. It will be doubly difficult because you are every day witnessing and looking at this person. Maybe you're having to have some form of interaction because you're on the same team. This can be extremely difficult. One of the ways to detach emotionally is internally. That is the internal emotional boundary that you set with yourself when you tell yourself that this person is not a good partner. This is not somebody you want to have a relationship with because it is not healthy for you, because you're dealing with dysfunction, you're dealing with pathology, and you're now on your path to healing. So continually reminding yourself that you are on the right path is very helpful. The second thing you need to do is you need to set that boundary also on the outside. So limit showing your emotions to that person. In other words, you're practicing gray rock. You also want to limit your interactions. So if you find them in common areas or if your office is close by and it's tempting to go and talk to them, don't do this. This is adding fuel to the fire. The same with maybe you wanting to have some form of vendetta and flirt with them in front of their new girlfriend or boyfriend or flirt with somebody else while they're watching you to evoke jealousy in them. Don't do this. Again, this is entering the game. You know they love it. You know they adore triangulation. It makes them feel more important and more significant and you're only giving them more narcissistic supply. So the less you engage, the better. 
Tip number two, keep your interactions to a minimum. So you want to show very little interest emotionally in them, but also if you say are working on the same project as they are, you can ask your manager or the HR department to move you somewhere else so you don't have to have those interactions. The same with their new source of supply, the same with their new partner. If you don't want to work with them, if you don't want to be in the same vicinity, ask to be moved. Same with the area of the office where you may be. If you don't feel comfortable sitting across from them, ask to be moved. Of course, you don't want to state too much to too many people about what it is you're dealing with to keep it professional. And of course, you don't want to stir up office drama, which people love feeding off of. So try to keep it to a minimum, keep it very professional, say the most important things you have to say to your manager, to your boss, and then tell them that it is absolutely vital that you move somewhere else because this is a person that um, you just, you're, you're incapable of working with them and it's going to compromise your performance. So figure out a way to frame it so that it's not too personal, but at the same time, it allows you to ask to be relocated. Tip number three is up your self-care. It is crucial that you take care of yourself if you're being daily bombarded with this emotional drama. If you feel like you're constantly fighting an inner war, what you need to do is really focus on your health, your goals, and your future. Try to limit your ruminations and thinking about this person and what happened in this relationship. Continue reminding yourself that it was the best thing that you have done, which it is. And instead, begin to focus on the things you can do for yourself so that you can heal faster and so that you can move forward to realize your dreams. If this is helpful to you, which it typically is, enlist help. Sometimes it's very hard to work these things out on our own. So you can talk to HR to give you, let's say, um, a contact of a good therapist. You can also hire a coach. You can also talk to your family and your friends. And of course, one of my favorite forms of purging your inner emotions, purging your thoughts is to write those things down and journal about it. And additional form of externalization, which I think is very helpful, is getting it out physically. So going to a gym, going on a walk, going on a run, that also helps to care for your body and make you feel better and more confident and raise those endorphins. But at the same time, it also helps to focus on something else and get those emotions out, metabolize the stress. Number four is asked to be relocated to another department entirely. So say you're working in marketing with this person, you may want to ask to be moved to sales or if the company happens to have multiple offices, this could be a very good opportunity to maybe move to another town. I know we're now we're talking about much bigger project and a lot more changes, but let me tell you, your sanity is worth it. Your health is worth it. If you feel that it is too daunting and too difficult to daily witness what's unfolding in front of you and have to deal with this person, then it might be this solution might be much better for you. So if, if it's too much pain, too much hurt, shame and self-doubt that, that is raging within you, then take action. It is going to be much better for you in the long term. And tip number five is as you are employing the other tips that I have already mentioned, you may want to start looking for another job altogether. So maybe this could be a perfect opportunity to launch into another career or to go to move and live in another city. Maybe this is a good time to apply for the job that you always wanted. Maybe there's this company um, down the street that you've always wanted to work at, but you never quite worked up the nerve to actually do it. Maybe there was never a reason enough to leave your job. Now could be the time. So also I find that starting to look for something new, whether it's new place to live, or a new job, while it is stressful, there's also an element of excitement here. So I would really focus on that. You do not need to suffer like this. You need to ask yourself if staying is indeed worth it or if it's more worth it to take the risk and try something new. I hope the video was helpful. 
let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much. Lots of blessings. And I hope to see you in Amsterdam. Bye-bye.